I'm here today at the McCormick uh, Railroad Park in uh, North Scottsdale. We're about to go take a tour of the famous uh, Pullman uh, car that uh, President Roosevelt, Truman, and Eisenhower all used during their presidencies. I thought I would just show you the train and the outside of it before we go take our little tour inside of the train. And as I always like to do, a little 360 of where we're at here. Winter day, January 27th, 2011. On the weekends, this would be a madhouse. Enjoy. Okay, the Pullman car that's on the back of the train here on display at the park is a National Historic Site. It's a presidential car built by Pullman in 1928, named after the explorer Roald Amundsen. It was used by four U.S. presidents, starting with Herbert Hoover, ending with Eisenhower. Although the main user of the car was uh, Franklin Roosevelt, who used it uh, pretty much exclusively from 1939 till the end of 1943 traveling thousands of miles all over the United States, traveling and visiting defense plants, military installations, things of that nature. Harry Truman used the car one time, and that was on FDR's funeral train. Harry Truman and his wife were on that car, and during the trip from Washington, D.C., up to Hyde Park, New York, to Barry Roosevelt, Truman had been up for about 36 to 38 straight hours, very tired, and he was sitting in the lounge on the back of the car, and two functionaries from the Roosevelt administration came up to him and said, Mr. President, we have some very important things we need to discuss with you. Those important things were, believe it or not, the A-bomb. Truman knew nothing about the Manhattan Project before the day before they buried Roosevelt. The only other president to use the car was actually not a president yet, and that would be Dwight Eisenhower. He used the car in 1952 on a huge whistle-stop tour of the United States and by that time the car was no longer used by the government, it had been sold to the New York Central Railroad, who loaned it to him for that whistle stop tour. It was kind of interesting, I just got invited back to Washington, it was the anniversary of Eisenhower's famous speech when he got out of office about beware of the giant military industrial yeah, complex. Very, very, yeah, yeah uh, that's big news nowadays, you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, it's kind of interesting what sure. you said at the end, it kind of tied things, but yeah. The society we're living in right now, unfortunately, we are definitely part of the giant military industrial oh, complex. Yeah, yeah. No doubt about that. So, and this is the lobby of the little train station. Yeah, this is the original Peoria, Arizona Santa Fe train depot built in 1890. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. So this would have been in Peoria, Arizona, which is west of us here, and yeah, we're in Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, brought here to the park in 1973. We'll just pan around and show this, and this lady's going to take me back and take some footage of this Pullman car and uh, we'll walk around and, and thanks a lot bud for the You're little welcome. introduction sure and I'm sure I'll, I'll put this on YouTube I'll show you how to find yourself oh. that's, well what we discovered I'll was the best way to there. mail things around yeah. was to put them on YouTube so we'll just uh, swing back through here and we'll go look at the Pullman car and uh, what's, your, what's your name ma'am? My name is Leah and Leah's going to go take us a little tour over here of the car. We always say out there, God bless and enjoy. <laughs> All the belts, it just ran everything. You want to explain to people what this is again? This is the original. Well, this is the Gabe Brooks machine shop. It was uh, Scottsdale's first machine shop built in 1930. The machinery was mostly made in the 1800s, and every drill press, uh, and milling machine was run by a series of belts from the overhead shaft. Yeah, and we're showing that now here, folks, all the bullies and pelts, I mean, pulleys and belts. <laughs> uh, before we had electricity and everything, run yes, everything right. Yeah. So. And the shop was originally used for well drilling operations on Brooks Powderhorn Ranch. 
Where was that at now? Um, hmm. That been in Peoria too, then, right? Or I'm no? not sure. Or would that have been here in Scottsdale? Peoria. I think it actually was here in Scottsdale. Which wasn't a town, obviously, no, then. No, no. And then during World War II, Brooks was contracted by Air Research to build precision tools and parts for B-29 bombers. It shows you how far we've come, huh? The general Dynamics, all those companies oh, yes. in town building parts for aircraft compared to back in World War II. Well, there you have it. Some more little history here in McCormick Tillman Park. Um, and brought to the park in 1973. There you go. You so, heard it. Now we'll go up to the baggage car. I see things like this. It reminds me of old westerns and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. They always rob the trains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun stuff. And this is what we're going to go walk into that the gentleman introduced here. We're in the Santa Fe baggage car, and um, this car was built in 1914 as a dining car. And what you're looking at there now would just be kind of what a station would have looked like, you know, and the station agent doing his job of sending telegrams and messages to the uh, engineers and such. Just kind of a little... Uh, station set up. So now it would have been Morse coding everything out there, there on the, on the, mm -hmm. over the wires. So. And we'll just come back around and pan around here back up to... And uh, like I said, the car, this car was built um, in 1914 as a dining car and then converted to baggage, a baggage car during World War II. And it was moved to the park in 82. And here we just have a lot of um, memorabilia. This is kind of demonstrating the Morse code and passing the messages to the engineer. And lots of gauges, uh, lanterns, and lots of good information, reading material about the uh, presidential car. Uh, Pullman himself. I just discovered something. When the Federal Reserve was started on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia oh, or I something. Know Jekyll Island. Yeah, yeah. and um, they didn't want to draw any attention to the gathering of all the super wealthy, like the Rockefellers and that, mm -hmm. and people like that to create the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. They took a Pullman Railroad private car down, really? yeah, from. Oh. Wow. from New York, wow. right? And, and it's just becoming like news now because the Federal Reserve is under so much yeah. attack. Yeah, so, so now all the history of how the Federal Reserve got started and was formed, interestingly enough, on Jekyll Island, kind of interesting. Yeah. I believe it's off South Carolina or Georgia or somewhere it's else. It's off Georgia. My, oh, it's off my Georgia then. was actually married on Jekyll Island. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a hell of a resort. Yes, I know that. it and, is indeed. And that's where the Beautiful. super, super wealthy of America had a state, and that's yeah. why they went there, and they shut down the big lodge. Well, in fact, I think that the big resort that is yeah. mostly the island right. um, is, like, the only thing there or something. It's a state park. Or, I'm not sure on that, so. Yeah, well, they talk about that, that they shut down that thing for those guys to create the Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. and that was they shut down the lodge, the lodge you're talking about, on the island. And like I said, the only reason I know is the Federal Reserve and Ron Paul and all those guys yeah, now are talking, talking about, uh, yeah, it's, it's in wow. front. But that stuff's been hidden from us forever. Forever. And forever. Now the economy's falling apart, uh, kind of finding out about it because of the internet and stuff like that. So. This and is here's, some information about um, the Mercy Train, which is uh, on the other side of the park. You might want to go over and take a look some at footage. that. Yeah. yeah. It was... Um, car that was sent with gifts from the French, gifts of gratitude, and... Um, oh, so that's the car out yeah. front with all the... I wonder why it had all the different symbols yes, on it. Yes, okay. that's the Mercy car. And here's some of the dinnerware, obviously, that they would have served. Yes, from the... This is Pullman dinnerware. And this is a lot of information pertaining to the presidential car. Um, this I find interesting is some of the actual logs of 
of this car, uh, and you've got your POTUS party, which is president of president of the United States, going from Washington. Many of the trips went to Hyde Park, where uh, Roosevelt had his home. I don't know who are these guys here. Was that? Looks well, that's like Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Yeah, there was Eisenhower on the um, loan trip that uh, the gentleman explained to us earlier. For his 1952 campaign. And here's some photos of the uh, car being installed here yes. at the uh, McCormick Ranch. And by the way, this land was dedicated by the McCormick oil family, I might say, that this park yeah. sits on. We had McCormick Ranch, of course, which became McCormick Ranch later in the housing development That's and everything right. like that. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger, that was just a working horse ranch. Mm -hmm. And the, and the uh, Rockefellers had a place right by. Really? Yeah, because I had to do electrical work on it, remodeling it. And they had an estate right on Inver Gordon and about oh, 68th Street. Yeah, that's pretty So a lot of prime the super area. wealthy lived here for a long time, or probably and still do. They still do in that Inver Gordon area. In that Inver Gordon area. 